Hello everybody, this is Joseph P. Farrell with news and views from the Nefarium on Thursday, March 21st, 2024. Can you believe we're already toward the tail end of March? Seems like we just finished one year and we're racing through the next. Anyway, the housekeeping today, don't forget we have a vid chat tomorrow afternoon at 2 p.m. Get your questions and comments in no later than 10 o'clock tonight, U.S. Central Time. Post them in the comments area. We have some interesting news and developments regarding the vid chats that are going to start in April. So if you're a member, please be sure you tune into that vid chat, either live or in the recording uh, for the announcement. Uh, we will be adding to the vid chat schedule, but at the same time, we are going to try and keep things uh, relatively sane on uh, the hours. So, let's get right to it. This story was sent to me courtesy of TS, and this is one of those stories that sneaks under the radar that may or may not be significant. I suspect, given all that we see going on in the world today, geopolitically, financially, economically, and domestically in this country, Canada and Great Britain in particular, but also internally to the European Union, that this story may have much more significance than the shortness of the article is letting on. And of course, I'll be sharing my high-octane speculations with you at the end of uh, the reading of the article. <coughs> Pardon me. The article itself is titled this way. This is the way the headline reads. Quote, Navy fires commander of the USS Ohio, the third submarine skipper relieved in seven months. And that's the headline. And I'm going to read from the initial few paragraphs. There's not that much to read here, but there's a great deal to contemplate. So I'll read the few initial paragraphs, plus uh, a short paragraph toward the end that kind of fleshes out the qualifications, or lack thereof, of this particular skipper. So here we go. Quote, the Navy fired the commander of one of its guided missile submarines on Monday, the third submarine firing in the last seven months, according to a press release on Wednesday. In other words, folks, the U.S. Navy is firing skippers, submarine skippers, at a rate of one every two months, if this trend keeps up. Continuing, quote, the commanding officer of the USS Ohio's submarine's gold crew, Captain Kurt Bologna, was relieved by Rear Admiral Nicholas Tilbrook, the commander of Submarine Group 9, quote, due to a loss of confidence in his ability to command, unquote, the Navy said. Bologna appears to be the third Navy commander relieved this year. However, since last September... Navy leaders have fired the skippers of the USS Georgia and the USS Alabama as well. Navy officials have previously said that in 2023, the service relieved 15 commanding officers. Now, I want to point out that the Ohio, the Georgia, and the Alabama are all boomers. In other words, these uh, submarines pack or used to pack, submarine-launched intercontinental ballistic missiles, like the Trident and so on. And many of them, I'm not certain how many of them, but many of them have been modified to carry the Tomahawk cruise missile. All right? So in other words, these are part of the triad, of the nuclear triad of the American arsenal, consisting of strategic bombers, land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles, and then, of course, submarine-based intercontinental missiles. Two more paragraphs here, folks. Quote, the Navy's statement did not offer any more information about why Bologna was removed from leadership outside of the boilerplate, quote, loss of confidence, unquote, remark. 
A Navy official told Military.com that the relief was, quote, related to conduct rather than performance, unquote, but would not offer any additional details. Now, I'm skipping toward the very end of this very short article to read a little brief uh, description of the man's biography. Uh, quote, throughout his career, Bologna sailed on the ballistic missile submarine USS Kentucky, where he completed five strategic deterrent patrols, as well as the attack submarine USS Annapolis. He served as the executive officer of the USS Virginia, and he commanded the USS Annapolis before coming to the USS Ohio. The public biography does not say when Bologna took command of the Ohio's gold crew, but publicly released images put the date before January 2021. Bologna's biography says that among his reward, uh, pardon me, awards are the Defense Meritorious Service Medal, the, Mer the Meritorious Service Medal, and the Navy and Marine Corps Commendation Medal. All right. So there you have it. The third skipper of a boomer in seven months. Gone. Now, in and of itself, the relief of a commanding officer wouldn't be any sort of thing that I would comment on, but we've seen a whole lot of strangeness in the American military, particularly in the American Navy, and we've seen that strangeness more recently extend itself to the two attempts by the British Royal Navy and their nuclear submarines to launch a couple of Trident missiles during a NATO exercise, and both launches failed, which indicates either that maintenance in the Royal Navy is achieving all-time lows, that training is going bad, perhaps a combination of both, who knows. But to have two ballistic missile launches fail during a NATO exercise designed to send messages to Russia is sending the wrong message. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Then recently we had the news out of West Point that the U.S. Army is changing its official mission statement at West Point, at its military academy, to get rid of the three terms, duty, honor, and country. Now, again, that in itself would not be all that newsworthy, except in the wider context of all the cultural change, including the introduction of, let's just be honest and call it wokery, into military training and into the military itself. Then we had, you'll recall, a few years ago, beginning with the USS Donald Cook incident, an, uh, an Aegis-class frigate in the Black Sea that was buzzed by a Russian uh, Sukhoi-22 fighter-bomber aircraft. And that fighter-bomber, you'll recall, turned off the electronics in the Aegis-class cruiser, which incidentally is our most sophisticated naval frigate and the donald cook had to uh, tuck its tail and run to the nearby romanian port of constanza and again a similar incident occurred when it was put on patrol in the baltic sea a few months later again with a russian sukhoi 22 fighter bomber aircraft approaching the uss donald cook and again turning off its electronics then we had the USS Fitzgerald incident in the Sea of Japan off the coast of Yokohama, where it literally collided with a freighter, and I have my suspicions to this day about that incident, although several Navy officers assure me it was just bad training. I'm not quite convinced. Uh, then we had a similar co near collision incident with the USS John McCain in the Straits of Malacca. So in other words, there's something going on in the Navy and what it betokens is either a loss of confidence, officers being promoted to command who are not capable or uh, able to carry out command and so on. And it raises, again, the stakes of the firings of these boomers, submarine skippers. Then we have 
the part that concerns me the most, and that's all the recent talk about nuclear war and the fact that this particular officer was not fired for performance, according to the one source that let out a little bit more information, but conduct. Now, conduct is a very broad term, and I suspect that in this case it might include that officer's opinions of the policies that the Navy is adopting. Whether those policies be wokery or ginning up war tensions and nuclear war talk and so on and so forth. So in other words, I think what we're looking at here, folks, could be best summarized as a quiet purge of the U.S. military's officer corps and particularly, perhaps, a purge of those officers who are not only professionally competent, but those officers who might be inclined to challenge an order to launch nuclear missiles. I want to take you back to 1982 and the massive NATO exercise that was occurring right when Yuri Andropov was the general secretary of the Communist Party in the Soviet Union, and incidentally, of course, a former KGB head. And you will recall, if you've dug into these stories, the fact that the Soviet Union's nuclear forces, its computer analyzed the NATO exercises and concluded that the Soviet Union was under attack and took all of its nuclear forces to the highest level of alert, and that computer actually spat out the order to launch the missiles. Now, of course, the missiles weren't launched, but the reason they weren't launched is a Russian colonel, I believe it was a colonel, maybe perhaps a major, that was in charge of one of these nuclear listening posts refused to confirm the order. So in other words, it took an act of human moral courage to stand down what the computers were telling people to do. And this is why I'm so concerned now, because in America, of course, we have not only instupidated the population to a breathtaking degree, that population in turn, at least part of it, enters the military. And that part of the population, with the increasing and stupidation of the country, is inclined to believe anything that the computer screen spits out and tells them, without any sort of critical reflection or attempt to dig further. And this is why I find this quiet purge of officers within the military, particularly the Navy, so skeptically and with such a jaundiced eye because if you're replacing these officers with the gung-ho rah-rah let's just follow orders and get on with this and you know have it out with Russia and China uh, we're facing a very bad problem a very bad problem particularly when the CO of the entire country is himself mentally deranged and corrupt and criminal, and I would go so far as to say evil. So a very, very concerning story, folks. One to watch. I suspect we're looking at more of the same with regard to militaries with France as well. That You have members of the military there coming out. And challenging Macron, we have the same thing going on in Poland with, uh, I think it's General Andreshi that's come out and said the Ukraine has literally lost millions trying to gin up the horror. So in other words, I think we're looking at a confirmation that the powers that be are planning some sort of, of military conflict to save their butts. Uh, and let's hope that we have enough officers that will stand them down. So that's it for our news and views of the day, folks. Some sobering news. Don't forget we have the vid chat tomorrow at 2 p.m. Don't forget I'm going to be making an announcement about the vid chats and what we're going to be doing for, uh, in the future. Cross your fingers. <laughs> 
that the weather, for one thing, allows us to do what I want to do. So stay tuned to get your questions, comments in no later than 10 o'clock tonight. We're going to be starting tomorrow at 2 p.m. Uh, I don't anticipate any bad weather. We do have some rain and storms in the area, but they're not severe. So hopefully that will stay and we will be able to pull off our vid chat at the appointed time and in the customary manner. We'll see you on the flip side. Bye-bye, everybody, and God bless.